Delighted to be joined by my first guest this morning on Ties Talk, Robert Hardman, who wrote a brilliant piece in yesterday's Daily Mail uh, on the situation in Oxford Street, the state of what is going on. Robert, a very good morning. Thanks for joining me on Ties Talk. I, I, you know, your, your piece was so well researched about what's going on. I mean, Oxford Street used to be the jewel in the crown of, uh, of retailing in London, alongside sort of Regent Street. But now you've got dozens of homeless sleeping in front of stores every night. Two department stores have shut down. Uh, we've got another department store, Marks and Spencers. They want to, to rebuild it, and that's been denied from them. I mean, and, and now we've got sort of rampaging youths thinking it's a, a practice for shoplifting. What's going on? Well, thank you, thank you for the introduction, Richard. I mean, uh, we haven't quite got to the tumbleweed stage yet, but, I mean, considering this is... Britain's number one best-known retail thoroughfare. It is frankly a disgrace. Uh, you know, many have said this. I mean, the boss of Marks and Spencers, the boss of many of the shops, bosses of many of the shops along uh, this 1.2-mile stretch of retail. I mean, it's it's it, it matters because if if Oxford Street is is rubbish, then uh, millions of people just simply aren't going to bother coming to London. I mean, Regent Street, as it happens, it, it looks pretty smart these days. Bond Street is very popular, but Oxford Street is the kind of number one. And you walk down it, and, and there are around 250 shop units there. I mean, the, the, the number one product on sale is absolutely nothing at all, because around 45 of them are shut. Um, a great number of them have been taken over by these fly-by-night operations and become what they call candy stores, selling overpriced American sweets, uh, dodgy phone chargers, um, luggage, uh, sort of souvenirs. Um, the, the council is desperately chasing them for unpaid business rates. At the moment, the council is owed at least £8 million in unpaid business rates. And the problem is is that uh, these, these companies can start up in one of these premises, get shut down overnight, and then re-emerge under a different name the next day because the liability for business rates lies with the, the tenant rather than the landlord. So you've got all these different factors. You've got these rickshaw drivers that's lying in wait to rip off tourists. Some poor Belgian lady and her two young sons it took a one-mile journey on one, um, a, a few weeks ago and was suddenly charged £450. And when she objected, she was met with menaces and threats and told, you know, pay up or else. So it feels... It feels lawless. The, the, the mobs we saw uh, running around this week, it didn't really take off, fortunately, because I think the, the police got a handle on it um, early on. But I, it, it all goes to paint a picture of just somewhere that you used to want to go, and now you just want to avoid it. And, and, and you obviously did a lot of research. You walked walk down there, as you say, sort of some 260 stores. So uh, if you've got 43 vacant, that's, that's not far off 20%. One in five mm. shops on the you know the most famous high street in the united kingdom is empty you've got another 10 percent that are these candy stores and just keeping on that it seems that they can sort of set up at whim they have fake directors they're essentially uh, companies set up on companies house sort of overnight mm -hmm. and the local authorities seem powerless to do anything about it i mean they've got to get a grip of this and 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 essentially prevent them from reopening haven't they well, we, you would think so. I mean, I spent a, a day walking up and down um, with the cabinet member on Westminster City Council who's in charge of uh, of planning and the environment. And, you know, he, he was saying to me, look, I, it's absolutely absurd that it is easier, easier to open a company, register a company, a company's house and start trading than it is to get a Westminster City Council library card because uh, there are almost no checks and balances he pointed to one of these candy stores that owes a large sum of money i won't name it um but um he pointed to it that the, the, the lease is, uh, belongs to a, a company in hong kong that's registered in the name of a law firm who don't answer the phone uh periodically the council go in and raid for, for the goods on sale because a lot of these things are counterfeit counterfeit sunglasses um uh, counterfeit phone chargers are actually quite dangerous they haven't been tested one of the fascinating things is that you see in these shops almost nothing has a price tag, which I find extraordinary. Yes. I went up to the sort of, and I went, well, where's the price tag? And he went, oh, well, what is it you want to buy? So I just sort of picked random, a packet of opal fruits, Starburst, I think they call that, off the shelf, and said, what about this? 
uh, and he had to run it through a scanner and said, oh, that'll be six ninety nine. Well, that's an absolute daylight robbery. And what these shops, they work on the premise that, you know, a sort of hassled uh, parent, perhaps, with a lot of children who want sweets to sort of grab all these things, and they just sort of stick it under the till and then just wave a contactless card. Uh, and then maybe an hour later, suddenly realise that they paid the best part of seven quid for a packet of M&M's. I, I thought, and, it, cause and, I, I thought it was... I, I thought, Robert, under the law, you had to display a price for a good and that that price was then uh, that um, the price that essentially the contract takes place at. There, there are, you can find, if you look with a magnifying glass, you'll find a few price price tags here and there, but yeah. on very on almost everything, it's not there. I mean, I call it my article, I just say it's, it's loophole street. Uh, I mean, the council, uh, it recently changed hands. Um, it's now a Labour council. It was Tory. Um, it's not a party political issue at all. I think both councils sort of despaired of this sort of situation. I think actually the current lot uh, have come up with a very good scheme, which is to sort of name and shame the landlords who are uh, allowing um, these fly-by-night dodgy candy stores to operate. And essentially, there's a list of them on the home. You can look them up on the internet. And saying to them, look, we're going to carry on naming and shaming you. Uh, unless you uh, help us flush them out. And they've now got a, a sort of scheme up and running where they're trying to get young startup businesses in there. They'll get six months uh, rent free, 70% off the business rates. If you get in there now, you'll be there in time for Christmas. You know, So they've had actually about 300 yes. applications for that. So, I mean, things in the long term uh, will probably improve. But, you know, it's, you used to have five great sort of uh, you know, are you being served giants, if you can call them that, on Oxford Street? You know, Selfridges, Debenhams, House of Fraser, Marks and Spencers, um, and, uh, oh, God, I've forgotten the other one, um, uh, John Lewis. Sorry. That's right. Oh, John Lewis. And, and, uh, and, 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 and Debenhams and House and Fraser have shut. Uh, Marks and Spencer are trying to get out. Um, and then, you know, when you get these 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 sort of mob stories, these sort of mob, flash mob stories, it, it just makes people think, oh, just go somewhere else. That's right, uh, and, 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 and it's... And, and it's now so expensive to get into London, you, it's uh, it's impossible to park. So uh, yeah, there's just multiple reasons not to go there, which is terrible for London and for tourism. It is, and it's, it's, it is terrible for the, for the overall economy because, I mean, uh, Oxford Street and, and Westminster City Council, uh, it, there's a broader area of Westminster City Council which covers basically central London, most of the expensive stuff. Um, generates a sort of vast chunk of, uh, of, 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 of national business rates, most of which, vast majority of which goes to the Treasury. So, I mean, this is uh, not just ripping off um, the residents of wealthy Westminster. This is ripping off people all over the country. And uh, what another factor that doesn't help, which um, the Council and the Daily Mail are very strong on this, we're both in utter agreement on this, that uh, Rishi Sunak some years ago introduced uh, a, a ban on VAT-free shopping for um, overseas That's right. tourists. Always used to be there. Uh, it's been taken away. Some Treasury um, number crunchers claim that this is depriving the uh, Treasury of a certain amount of, of, of revenue. Which I suppose, if you look at it a certain way, you could argue, well, you know, all that stuff uh, was bought VAT free. If they'd paid VAT, that'd be another X billion on top. However, it, that, what it doesn't take on board is the fact that most of these overseas tourists. Uh, who want to spend, say, £10,000 on a watch are pretty wealthy and they can just hop on a That's Eurostar right. no, and buy you, a you, you and the mail have you been know, running yeah. a, you've been running a big campaign, I know, on what is called the tourist tax. I did also know, just finishing, Robert, that um, uh, one of the most serious failings of Oxford Street is there only seemed to be one pub on it, you notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, did. I mean, I, you know, was, uh, people say things about journalists. I can't say I was desperately looking for one, but I was you, like, keeping a tally of you, what you, have we got here? Loads of shoe shops, loads of empty shops, loads of candy shops. And, what and, if you want to find? And absolutely. Only one pub, and it's a very long street. Robert Hardman, thank you so much indeed, the columnist for the Daily Mail. If you get a chance, do read his piece on the detail of that. It will shock you. It will horrify you.